I've been coming to this spot, or this location, for more years than I'd probably care to remember. And this scene has been driving me insane all that time. I've seen some beautiful images of this particular spot. We have a millstone. We have a beautifully gnarly tree. We've got beautiful green mossy rocks. We've got fallen autumn coloured leaves. And if my life depended on it, I couldn't get a decent shot of this. I've did a little video through the camera and I'll pop it up here somewhere or down here, one of the two. Theoretically, I think I've got all the elements compositionally that should make an image work. I've got, I've actually got two subjects. I've got the tree with its outstretched branches all twisted and gnarly and covered in moss. And I've got the foreground element, which is also the point of interest, which is the um, millstone. I've got rocks leading in from the left. I've got a path leading out through the right. So you come in through the left, you see the millstone and the tree, and then you, your eyes follow you off down the path. Does it work? I don't think so. And I don't know what I'm missing. I've seen some stunning images of this. Do we need mist in the background? Do we need more colour down here? Because this is still very green. Up the top, the trees are just beginning to change, but down here, we are still very green. Is that the issue? Am I deluding myself when I think that I've got all the elements of a composition that should make an image work? Answers on a postcard, please. I'll pop it up. I, I don't know what else I can do. I'm down fairly low. And I'm, I normally shoot up here and I'm trying to get out of that because you get a different perspective when you're shooting down low. I wanted the millstone quite big in the image. The path leading off are quite like, so as I say, you come in, you look around the image and then you go out of the image. That's my theory anyway. So yeah, answers on a postcard as to what the hell I'm doing wrong and how to make this particular subject work. Because I love that tree. Reminds me of the Whomping Willow in Harry Potter. Not quite as big in its uh, trunk. <laughs> yeah, all right, Miss said. So anyway, I didn't come here to shoot this. It was just there as I walked around. I was feeling the need for some water, but not the coast because the sky was blander than a bland thing this morning. So I thought I'd come down here. We've had plenty of rain. I was hoping for a little more colour. I think maybe we've got another... I don't know, this could be one of those where there's no colour here this week and next week when I come back, it'll have blown all the leaves off the trees and we'll have no colour anyway. You know. Right, onwards and upwards. about Padley is you can oh good morning by the way <laughs> forgot to say that this earlier on every time you come here there's always something slightly different be that the way the water's cascading over the rocks the amount of leaves on the floor the little whirlpools or in this case the tree I can't see where I'm pointing by the way so I'm hoping I'm pointing in the right direction as I walk down the path that jumped out and said woohoo come and take a photograph. So I thought, well, it'd be really not too really, wouldn't it? I've been here for about 20 minutes, going up, down, left, right, portrait, landscape, down the bottom, as far as I dare go. And I can't find a composition that works, which is frustrating. Stood, I've tried standing here, but, the tree blocks the cascades. Even coming down low, there's a cascade in the background that 
quite like because it has a curve, an S curve coming through. So if I go down here, whilst it's clearing, or the tree is clearing the, the second cascade, it's blocking the back one, but not totally blocking it, so it looks very messy. The other issue we have is these Ufin Great Rocks. Where I've ended up, I've managed to get one, two, and one in the water, three rocks pointing in to this tree. The other thing to consider here is getting enough clearance on the tree so that the rocks aren't shielding it. Shielding is not the right one, but interfering with it. I wanted clear space around that tree. The fourth issue, down here, you might make out a square of white foam, which is not pretty. The rest of the water is rushing, but it's got like a little bit of an eddy going on down there. It's not moving, so it's just a block of water or a block of foam, which really doesn't look nice. So I've had to try and compose to remove that, which unfortunately means I've removed the last of the cascades. I went down into the water to try and get that last bit of the cascade in, but then I've got that big patch of white foam, which doesn't work in any way, shape or form. So I think where I ended up was just about right. I put the polarizer on. I did a shot with and without the polarizer on. I'll put both of them up. Jury's out on which one I think is best. And no other filters. Let me just check what my exposure time was. We are at F9 and a third of a second, ISO 100. As I say, no other filters. There's obviously been some trees wrenched out from down here because there's a big root system here that's quite dodgy. You get your foot trapped in it. But that tree's beautiful. Done the best I can with it. But say, I've not spotted that before, or to the best of my knowledge, I haven't spotted that before. And the little waterfall coming down behind it, the little cascade, works beautifully. And at the settings I've got, there is motion in it. It's not completely blurred out. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want 100% silky smooth water. So yeah, lots of elements of a composition some are working with me and some are working against me, and it's a case of moving around and adjusting your frame to get the best out of the scene that you can. mentioned the weather today have a boys and girls it was forecast thick cloud 100% cover perfect conditions for doing waterfalls and cascades we've got blue sky up there but it's kind of working because it's letting a little bit of light in I have been stood here for 25 minutes trying to figure out how to shoot this and I think part of the problem is I don't really know how I want to shoot it. I didn't have a preconceived idea when I saw this fall and that tree, except I wanted to get both of them in the shot. So I have settled on portrait orientation. I'm trying to get a little bit of motion in the water. I did start off with my normal, really long exposure. Um, can't remember how long that long exposure was. We'll have a look-see. But then I thought, actually, I quite fancy something a little bit shorter. So I was at three seconds and F, F18. Really need to get my glasses on. Um, and I, yeah, I don't dislike it because you know what I'm like, I like my milky water. But I decided I wanted some shorter exposures to try and capture some streaks because there's an awful lot of bubbles. But no matter what I do, I'm at f5.6, 
I am at one thirteenth of a second and I'm still not getting any streaks. I'm getting a little bit of streakiness, but not a huge amount. It's a little bit tricky composition wise because we have that rock in the middle and I've got water going both sides. And I don't think it actually works with water coming out both sides of it. It just looks a little bit messy. I'm trying to keep that out. And then I'm trying to get that beautiful, which I'm fairly certain is a beach tree because it's oranges and yellows. And I really like that. Um, I'm trying to leave a little bit of space for the water to streak into. And I'm oh, just tweaking, get everything straight. I've got the polarizer on to remove the reflections, remove the glare off the water. I did put a 0.6 grad on because it's quite light up there. We'll try that. I love the shape of that rock on the left. It's been grooved out. Lord knows how that happened. But it's dark at the bottom and it's light at the top. And it's almost a kind of fairy tale feel. Something not quite right with that. Yeah, I prefer the images that are slightly further back. And for a change, the water around here is really peaty. If you look down to the water, it's sort of a browny colour. I'm not keen on that. I like my waterfalls white. But it's actually coming through quite white. Yeah, it's brightening up considerably. And I actually prefer it when it's really dull and overcast in waterfalls and cascades. But I think that works. I think this is going to be my last shot. And again, as I was walking along, this fern here caught my eye. And then I saw this swirl. And it's, it's kind of thinking about being a swirl. It's not really making a very good effort. Then we have another cascade coming down. The caveat in this is the fallen log or the fallen tree. But behind the fallen tree, we have some lovely colour in the leaves. Uh, 20 to 25 minutes seems to be my thing today. I've been right down on the bottom. I've been over there. I've been landscape orientation. And I've settled again on portrait. Does it work? The jury's out. I need to get it on the big screen and have a look. The theory is there. Whether it's a good idea badly executed or a bad idea well executed, I'm still not sure. If you don't try, you don't know. And if I get home <laughs> and I go, oh my God, then you're not going to see these images. But anyway, that's it. I'm done. My tummy's rumbling. Need to go and get some brekkie. I hope I've been of some help with things to consider, things to look at, things to incorporate into your composition, things to try and remove from your composition, what to look at, have you got something leading in, is there a curve, hope I've been of some use to you. And if not, I'll try again next the weekend after next. <laughs> so anyway, from a rather on the verge of autumn at Hadley Gorge, I'll bid you farewell, have a good couple of weeks, and I'll see you soon. See you later.